please welcome Jakub Czech. placed it 
And uh, there's one more uh, cheerful uh, moment about the book that I would love to share. And, uh, and that is that there's a company in Switzerland that actually bought 25 books to give away uh, to their employees because they were really passionate. And, and these are things in, in my life after the book that really does not, I, I did not need anything more and, and just filled me with so much energy and so much passion. So, so I would love to, that's, that's why I'm sharing with it with you because it really helped me a lot and it means incredibly much to me. After the publication of the book, I actually kind of uh, disappeared and, uh, and, and I, I did not notice it, but recently I posted on Instagram and, and, and there was one feedback that really just set me off and it was Max saying, you're alive. So that was a moment where I realized that I really disappeared and I would love to make, make that up. So, uh, so, so I would love to talk about what I have been doing and, and how things are going and everything about that. It's really great to say that after the book, some of great clients came to me that share the same point of view that they really wanted to work specifically uh, with me and with me only. And I've been working on, on multiple commercial projects during this year. Uh, however, there are three biggest ones and, and most passionate ones that, I, that I've been working on, but they, these are not going to be released until next year. So I'm going, I would love to talk a bit about what is upcoming in, in 2019 about these three passionate and big uh, projects that I actually have been working on. And the first is from Rio de Janeiro. I've been working on this one for almost five, five months and this has been a really non-traditional project. From, from, from what we've worked on and the idea and, and all of it is really not traditional and I think that it really has a very strong belief and message about CGI. These images, as, as they, they, really, they really talk and it shows CGI in a different way and in a much more artistic way, uh, it, is, it, it would be amazing if it could be shown some, somehow. And, and I'm very happy to say that there's going to be art exhibition in Rio de Janeiro next year and that we're shooting 10 minutes short documentary that is going to be located in Slovakia and in Rio de Janeiro and is going to, in the end, talk about this strong belief and all of this is going to be happening sometimes in April 2019. Second project that is very passionate and, 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 and is really filling me with a lot of uh, happiness is located in Houston. And for this particular project, we are making 3D models of Furnitures. I think you drained my battery, guys. So, and I'm very happy because we're focusing on these 3D models and we're making them incredibly detailed. We're taking care of every single stitch, we're taking care of every single fold, and we're trying to get them photoreal as much as possible. And, 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 and these models that are in there, Designers have spent an incredible amount of time to build them and we are trying to get right every single little nuance that is, that is in them and these models are being modeled uh, and there's going to be many of them in, in the quality and as we would love to get as precise and, and great with photorealism and details there need to be materials that match that level of quality too so, for, for recently I've been working on a scanning studio to, to get these materials in, in that detail and in that depth and to really make it how it should be. So, uh, this is actually, uh, these are samples of materials that I'm using and I, and I use these just to build a studio. So, I used it to ca uh, calibrate the studio 
I used it to calibrate, calibrate the software, the colors, and everything that is uh, connected to it. And then I've been able to get really precise and detailed albedo, normal, and, and different maps. And what allows us uh, to allows me to, to then actually make this possible is that for these furnitures, I'm getting huge fabrics, huge letters, and, and different materials that we'll be using. This is, uh, this is actually bigger than one by one meter fabric. And, and I'm getting all of those. And I'll, I'll be scanning all of those and I'll be putting this uh, type of materials on those detailed models. So getting textures from these, I believe, is going to allow us to really get precise. And we would love to build environments to put these objects in that are at the same level of detail, so I'm also getting wooden floors, I'm actually getting plaster, this is actually 8 meters square of, of wood, and, and I would love to really, with this Houston project, get as detailed as possible, as precise as possible, and I would love to go through actually around 5 rendering engines to really just pick everything from start and, and do something that is going to be spectacular. And this one is scheduled to start to be to start to be being published in a quarter second in 2019. The third big invention project is located in New York, and this one is a bit different because this one is about augmented reality. And I'm not sure how many of you actually uh, know my background, but my background is not an is not an architecture. Uh, but it's informatics, and, and I have actually made a ba bachelor and the final thesis that were based on uh, 3D, on scanning technologies and all of this, so I was aware of this, and, and, and with this client, we, uh, there was a really, um, let's say, challenging idea, and I'm not going to talk a lot about it, but I'm going to show you a video of an alpha that, that I've built, it's actually an app that I've built, and it is running in my apartment on a little uh, iPhone SE. So this is actually an apartment and it, it, there are all over there are papers with feature points. It's just for the stability. And now I'm actually opening the app that I try to, uh, to develop. And again, this is alpha. So it's a very first uh, trial, but it's kind of proof of a concept. So, so now I'm walking around my apartment, an app has detected and laid over new apartment all around my apartment. So, so this is me walking in my real apartment, but I'm immersed and I see a completely different one. And the yellow points that are in there actually uh, are, are points that are sticks to the real sofa or real kitchen island, but I and my phone see a new apartment. And also, I see outside of windows. I can, I can, I can see what is outside the windows. And uh, for this, I also developed a different way of transferring scene from uh, from 3ds Max to Corona to make it really run fast and to make it still look good. And this is only the first trial, so we're gonna work on this. And there are different furnitures, like random furnitures. It's only one of the first trials that we, that we did, uh, but, but in, in real, although it sometimes uh, changes the position, it, it gets back, and I thought that it would be really disrupting the experience, but it's not. As it's really fast, and, and it gets back really fast, it really does not break the experience. And uh, experience is, is really steady. It really... It really is there, and, and, and I can look in the details, and I can go around. So, so for what we've, uh, what, what we've been doing, uh, this, is, this is kind of a first alpha. Uh, so these are all uh, exciting projects that I've been working on since, since the book. And I, again, I, so, so I've been alive, I just have not posted, because, for example, from the Rio de Janeiro, there have been five months of work, I visited Rio, we, we really put enormous amount of, of time and work into it, 
Uh, but but it, we, it's, it's still to be published and, and, uh, and some of those are also not to be published yet. But these have been close uh, collaboration with clients who wanted to work particularly with me. And I believe that uh, it's, it's, it really is coming from the book. So that's, that's what is scheduled next year. And uh, I'm very excited what is, what is uh, up, to be, up to be published. Amongst those bigger projects, as, as I showed recently, uh, there has been a little smaller ones too. And uh, one of them is, is the one that I'm going to show next. And it, is, it was really more of a traditional one. It is uh, Arquis oriented. It, it's, it's been a traditional one, but I wanted to make it non-traditional. So uh, I, I took the liberty and then tried different uh, workflows and then experimented a bit. And I think that it, it is really interesting what we ended up with what we ended up with in terms of images and in terms also of client reaction and all of that. And as I started with namings of cities, I would love to continue that. So this one is uh, from Toronto. And how different this has been is that actually with make shot, for example, like this one, that is, uh, let's say, a mid detail, but then we've also produced more personal and uh, close-up details that, that helps to, to really build an emotion in the viewer, I think. So a shot like that is complemented with two other shots that, that build the emotional impact. And before I actually uh, come, uh, come to this, I would love to really start a bit to, to show the process and show those different experiments that I did within this project because I think that it was really interesting. So I use my workflow uh, one, so actually all of the objects have been uh, modeled and done separately in, uh, in my AGRI studio. So with, with this little wardrobes or ceilings or different kind of uh, objects, all of them, every single one of them. And then after this has been done, I wanted to pick an AGRI, but I wanted to rethink or, or experiment with this a bit. So, when I see AGRI, I, in, in like many years ago, I thought that this is, if, if I put an AGRI of a, of a sunny day, that's what the lighting is going to be. Uh, however, I believe that really AGRI image like this one does not tell full truth or everything about how the lighting goes and what emotion it brings. So even AGRI like this cannot be really judged from picture. So that's why I took a HDRI and I started to do previews. So I built this little scene and there are uh, HDRIs that are sold in their uh, spheres or every single of them uses a different scene to really show that emotion or lighting. But I built this one and I made four different pre previews. And I think that this is the real representation of the, of the HDRI. So I don't really even need that picture, I just need how it looks in the scene, what impacts it has, and, and when I look at, look at it, is it, is it sun, is it something different? That's important emotion for me. And I've done the same for the other HDRI. And then I actually thought that this is really a repetitive task. So, so I thought of a script. Uh, and the, so, so I asked my friend, and he actually wrote a little script that helped me to produce these kind of previews for all AGRIs I had. However, after I gave this a trial on a little, let's say, 12 AGRIs, I noticed that there's one slowdown, and that is, that is like loading uh, the HDRI. If the HDRI is 10K in RAS, it really takes some time for 3 Max to load it. So I wanted to do a little test, and uh, wanted to see how much resolution has impact on the scene. And it's interesting because 10K versus 1K is almost none. So I'm going to go from 10K to 1K here. And there's almost nothing. If, if I, when I observe this up close, what really is the only, uh, the only difference is like the blurriness of the reflection. But the, the light 
uh, itself is not changing. It, it really, for most of HDRIs, does not change at all. And I don't want to say that let's use 1K, but I, I, I just wanted to see if I can make 3S masks load HDRIs faster to make those previews for me faster. So I created for every HDR a 1K version 2, and then I let the script to build these uh, previews for me pretty fast. And then since then, I actually use only this to really see how what HDRI to use. And I just go through these and see the emotion and find those, find that emotion that I would love to use or or I would love to put. So. After this, I had also, well, I really like brute force methods, I feel like this one. So I thought, well, if I can produce this, then maybe I can just find an angle for a scene and then just produce this and, 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 and just, just try to find the lighting like that. So I actually, for this particular project, once I finished my workflow, I just started to do this brute force method of lighting. So I started to, to th this is actually produced by the script. So in the end, what I did is, is I, I generated like 10 chapters previews of lighting. And that was, uh, of course, that is uh, really not suggested as a workflow. But in the end, this really helped me to understand how much EGRI can impact the scene and where I need to improve my texture, where I need to improve my color uh, mapping, where I need to, where really HDRI as an influence ends. So this helped me with that understanding a lot, and in the end I was able to pick also the lighting I like the most and further adjust and create a final image out of that. So that has been really interesting. Therefore, I, uh, I uploaded a, uh, this script uh, so, if anyone is interested, I think that this is a really nice way to, to understand better lighting, to, give, to make your library, to just really use it as a tool that, that can help you even once to build a library, uh, to, to understand lighting, and so on. And there are actually, the uh, script has been written by Rode and Schiffman, and there are actually version for four different orientations, so 0, 90, 180, and 270 degrees, and there is a version for 10 different orientations, but it's easy to just split it to whatever is needed, however, with these two examples, I think that it's really uh, easy to understand what to change to adjust the script. Uh, this script is really very rough, so I've made a videos of how to use them, so what is needed first is just to set up resolution of the image. So here I'm setting up 600 pixels. Then I'm setting up a limit, like 20 seconds, 1 minute. I'm setting up 6 passes here. And I'm also going to highlight compression and just putting it at 2.5. And also using UHD. What is important is to save the scene then and close and restart 3ds Max. Uh, that is unfortunate, but it's needed because of how rough the script is. So I'm saving the scene and closing the 3 max. What I'm doing next is just opening 3 max once again. And once it's opened, I'm going to full screen the view that I would love to do because screen ignores everything else. And at the same time, I'm opening rendering dialog and I'm opening material editor. And what is needed to be done is drag and drop HDRI. And it doesn't really matter which one it is right now. I'm setting up spherical and I'm, and I'm going to and link it to uh, environmental slot. Also, I put name, like a lot of A's, just because it's easier for me to find it later. So once this has been set up, I'm going to drag and drop the script and pick the map. I can, I can easily find it because it has this long name. Put an instance. Now I'm going to create folder as an output path, just where all the images are going to be put and uh, generated. 
So I drag and drop. I copy paste the path in here. And now I'm selecting all of those AGRIs that I would love to use. So I have a bunch from uh, no emotion here. And it already starts the process. And the next slide actually shows how this looks in the folder itself. So, so, there, are, so there are all these previews popping. Or, so there's a preview of AGRI and all those different lighting uh, uh, orientations rendered. So as for the scene, I tried it from different angles just to see how impactful it is, just, just to play with it really. And, and uh, after, after that, I wanted to do this emotional story, but not story in a way as, as we usually see the story, but more of an emotional pathway to, to human perception. So for example, for an image like this, again, that is almost a mid-detail, there has been produced an up-emotional image like this one, and like this one. And all these three together created this story. And this is what I call the emotional story because I think that it really takes the viewer and, and, and let, let the viewer understand how, how, impact, how the scene impacts once, for example, if someone visits this lobby and then touches the fabric. It's, it's, it's a great impression, it's a great feeling. And I think that this is more of a up-close emotion that, that, that this kind of workflow brings to viewer. So it is composed of a mid-detail and two details, and in my eyes, really completes emotional impact on, on a human being. So to, to reach that, I actually, after I did all those variations for lighting, I went for a composition hunt. And this hunt has been uh, composed of three phases. So the first one was actually using wide-angle camera and just going around, making previews, trying to find them. I worked it, I, I used this process a lot, where I just save tons of previews and tons of different angles, because I, the more options I cover, the better I can choose them. And this is something I really usually do. I just pick many, many previews just internally. For example, this. For the white cameras, there has been around 60 cameras done that I could pick from. The other step of this uh, composition hunt is narrow camera. So using more narrow lenses and again, going and looking and finding the, 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 the great compositions that are there. This also, like producing many, many of these helps also uh, artists to understand that some composition just will never work and some will just work like that. So, so this, this really takes time. I mean, on this scene, really, Composition Hunt has, has taken an incredible amount of, of, of time, but it helped me to, to be able to, to afterwards pick those compositions that, that, that could even make that story and, and just all together, like all compositions together, could then make a complete emotion with the viewer. And the one that I like the most is uh, Close Up. It's the third one, and is the most personal one. That really, and, and this is something that I believe is also appreciated very much by designers, because if there's someone spending weeks on, on, on choosing a fabric, or on choosing uh, or on choosing um, there is a metal strings. It really is important to for the feeling. And, and once someone visits it, you, you don't perceive every detail. You 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 see the fabric and, and you see the power of it and all of it. So the difference in my eyes that is that this picture is very wide and is more of a technical. It is of course can be emotional, but it really is a lot of technical. It tells where is the place, where where everything is placed, and all about it. And versus this kind of emotional uh, emotional strip that shows you something and then gets you close. And I think that this is really similar to how movies 
are being shot. There are many, many details, and that's because view. And that's the, what what I think is that a human uh, is a is a being that that really the pathway to to uh, to a human being is 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 emotions. Human is emotional being, and I think that all these details and all these feelings are are in the inevitable for 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 emotion. So by story, I don't mean putting a person there. By story, uh, by emotional story, I mean really feeling the surface, being there and understanding the space from a feelings point of view. So. So that's, that's the difference that I see here. And to complete uh, the story, there has been this Zen garden that has been complemented with, with the details. There has been lobby that has been again complemented with emotional uh, shots. And then there has been also third area that has been complemented with, with a shot of planks. And then these planks it's a wood that designers spend a lot of time to choose, and, and and when you see it and when you touch it, you can you can you know that it's not new, but it's not old. It really tells you a lot. It tell the the designer have put an incredible amount of time into that, or into metal strings. It has a, it really is a symbol of something, and that goes with the other story. There has been some more emotions found like these, and after showing uh, this to client, what 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 was uh, what, what I did is that the client actually asked me to do four pictures, and I really went a bit silent because I wanted to 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 do something else. And again, this has been one of a very few uh, traditional projects that I did, and, and I don't really think that there's going to be many more ever. Uh, but what happened is, is that uh, afterwards I showed this to the client and, and the designer went crazy. So they, 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 they really wanted all of them. And then the reason is that once, once this is put in a catalog, uh, a viewer really feels that and, and want to sit there and, 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 and want all of that. And, and, and really these emotions are, are, uh, are playing with a with human. However, uh, these all these images are 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 making, I believe, emotional buckets in in a person, but they does not completely tell how the space is done space wise. So there has been one more image, and that is this one that they just clicked together or all the buckets how, how where they are placed space wise, and this was just a technical solution for for uh, for these. That was just technical solution to, to make these stories complete technically and space-wise. But I believe that this this is this these stories are the are the basis that the project is going to be perceived as something I, uh, that we were want to be there and, and understand it very much and uh, very fast because it is a direct pathway in my mind. And that has been it. Thank you so much.